give your attention uh, to the poem of which I intend to uh, start, uh, read or teach you today. The name of the poem is given on the board, Sea Fever. And the name of the poet is John Edward Meskill, who was born in 1878 and died in 1967. Sea Fever, the big title of the poem, will indicate a kind of a feeling of excitement. Fever is, 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 is here, here fever doesn't mean disease, it is a kind of excitement, excitement for the journey. C fever, C stands for the vastness and beauty of nature. So, the poem indicates the poet's, the poet's thirst for or longing for the vast beauty of nature. It is a wanderlust or wonder thirst, whatever you may call. So in this poem, the poet intends to express his desire to join the adventure again and again. Remember one thing very carefully that if we take the poem symbolically, Life itself is a sea of journey. It is a journey from mother's womb to tomb. And the journey is full of trials and tribulations, sufferings and pains, joys and sorrows. Just like the sea journey. So the poem has... The poem, the sea, the, the sea journey or the sea voyage may be equal to the voyage of life. Now this poem speaks of the excitement of the poet feels at the anticipation of a sea journey or sea voyage. John Nesville is an English poet and a poet laureate of the British or Great Britain. The poem was first published in 1902 in Salt Water Ballads. It was first published. Now, today I will only read the first section of the poem because time is short, I am in a hurry. In the next class, we'll uh, finish the poem by reading the two stanzas. Today, we'll see, uh, only uh, read the first section of the poem. Open at the page number 48. I must go down to the seas again. Be careful. The poem starts with first person. With the first person, I must go down to the seas again. So it's a lyrical poem. And the passion for the sea is romantic, is highly romantic. And the poet's desire is very strong. That's why he used the word modal, must. He must go down to the sea. He must undertake the journey to the sea or to the vast beauty of nature to explore the different types of adventure nature provides us to the lonely sea and sky. See these two images, sea and sky. One is a mundane image, ski, sea, and sky is a cosmic image. So there is an attempt to connect the cosmic and the mundane. In the very first line, the, the poet clearly betrays his intention of connecting the cosmic and the earthly to the lonely sea. The sea is not turbulent, the sea is not crowded. 
this word lonely indicates romantic melancholy. The poet undertakes the journey. He intends to go to the sea, but the sea will be lonely. And there will be the sky. Both the sea and the sky stand for vast beauty of nature. And they are cosmic and earthly. And all I ask is a sheep and a star to steer her by. Here her means the sheep. Sorry. Her, steer, her, the poet appears to, appears to think herself as a lead. And all I ask is a tall sheep. And I, all I ask, see this line, and all I ask, in the second section you will, you will see the same line, and all I ask, this is a poetic device, a poetic rhetorical device, it is called anaphora, a repetition of the same place. When we will complete the poem, you will see that this anaphora, or the repetitions, comes thrice to strengthen the poet's desire to go to the sea. But the poet asks for a tall sea because it is a long journey and a star. Again, the sea, the sea stands for journey and the star stands for the guide. One is cosmic and the other is mundane or earth. So the process or the objective of the poet remains the same, to connect both the earthly and the cosmic during his journey. And the wheels keep, and the wind song, and the white sail sinking. And the wheels keep. And the wind song. The poet thinks the wind is singing. And the white sail is shaking. These images. Here we see the repetition of the vowels. And it is called assonance. The vowel sound E and A. We is kick and the wings, song, white, sail, shaky. Repeat this, this device is assonance, is called assonance. This is employed to create a musical effect. And a gray mist on the sea's face. The sea will not be clear, it will not be shiny or bright with sunshine, it will be misty because this mist on the sea's face adds to the mystery of the journey, adds to the note of adventure, the sense of adventure and the romantic halo surrounding the poet's long sea voyage and a grey dawn breaking. Gradually the dawn, dawn will break. So the journey starts from the beginning, right from the beginning. It is not a journey from the middle or the journey from the day. It is a journey from dawn. And the journey will, will be from dawn to dusk, from life, from birth to death. So the, in the first section, the poet clearly, clearly expresses his intention to go to the sea, connecting the cosmic and the earthly with the objective of enjoying the vast beauty of nature. And he employs, he has employed some poetic devices like assonance, anaphora, and 
the repetitions of N and we will see N and, and this, in, in this anaphora to, to decorate or to embellish his poem with a note of with a note of sweet romantic sweet romantic or, or farther. So this is all about the first section of the poem. In this first section of the poem clearly brings out the poet's strong passion for nature. Thank you uh, uh, for being with me. But before finishing today's uh, uh, teaching, I will bring your attention. I intend to bring your attention to the board. There are some vocabularies and uh, antonyms. Lonely means alone, opposite word is crowded, ask, question, query or question, opposite word is reply, steer, to guide, opposite word trail or follow, win means bridge, hawa, kick, jerk, shaking, trembling, mist means fog, dawn, daybreak, opposite word is dusk. So this is all about the poem. Thank you for being with me. And uh, in the next classes, we'll uh, teach you the last two sections. Finish you with the last two sections. Follow, please follow.